Rub up your engines! Now, oh, here's an oddball one. We got a 2007 Toyota Corolla and it doesn't run right. It accelerates very sluggish. And the weird thing is, he took it to various dealers and they all said they can't find what's wrong with it. So let's see if they were screwing them around or whether it's something that even I can't figure out. Now, theoretically, it's had spark plugs, air filters, everything. I don't, I don't trust anybody. But I'm going to start by checking a battery and alternator. Many problems can be created by lack of power from the alternator or battery. So, cheapest battery you can get from AutoZone. Check the old battery. Since it's not a very expensive one who knows now it says 520 cold cranking amps so set it up for that in vehicle battery post top post regular cold cranking amp got to put it way down to 520 and let's see what it says good battery okay now we'll check the alternator so start it up <laughs> That's working fine. So we know it's getting correct voltage to everything. Now let's just take a general overview of the engine. Make sure they weren't lying about the air filter. Now oh, that's clean. Okay, all the hoses are hooked up. There's no loose hoses anywhere. That's all on. So we'll take the stupid beauty cover off. Everything looks pretty normal so far. So let's check out a spark plug. We'll take the number one out. That's the one in the front of the engine. They don't give you enough working room, so you got to pull the wire off. And that's always fun on these. You got to squeeze and pull. There we go. All right, that's out of the way. Now we'll get a spark plug socket, pull out the spark plug, and we'll examine it. Pretty much normal color, grayish. There's no soot or anything on it. So we'll measure with feeler gauges. It's 44 thousandths of an inch. If the gap was wrong, it can run wrong. But it's gapped right and it's running fine. So there's nothing wrong with that. So we'll put this back together. Nothing obvious showed wrong. So we'll plug in the scan tool. See what it says. It's reading all the information now. It knows what it is. So we'll do a network scan. This baby's only got 118 thousand. That's not much for a Toyota Corolla. Now it does have one failed module. Let's see what it is. It has a code for failed engine immobilizer system well that can't be making the car not accelerate right that's a mobilizer system that in the key the chip in the key has to match the computer if it doesn't the car will not start the starts it just has no acceleration so that's not the problem so we'll switch over to live data in this case you're better than a computer the computer hasn't found any failure, but it doesn't accelerate right. The computer's only going to trip code. Sometimes it has to go as much as 25% plus or minus the normal data, which, hey, if it's 23%, you can feel it running poor, but it won't trip any code. We're going to start looking at the data. Short term, it's subtracting fuel, but long term, it's adding fuel. It's odd. There's a fuel trim that's kind of squirrely. Let's try to figure out why. Look at the spark advance. Rev it up a little. Well, that's working. Goes up when you accelerate and goes back down when you go back to idle. Taking a while to get back down, but that's because this I got all this data and the data isn't going to refresh fast enough. In this case, the math sensor, 2.03 grams per second. How you really want to test it is turn the AC off, put it in drive, and see what it does. Now it's idling. It's saying 2.39 grams per second. 2.34. This is a 1.8 liter engine. It should be reading closer to 2 or 1.8 than 2.34. Now one thing that can cause loss of acceleration and weird fuel trims is a clog cap catalytic converter so we got a gauge we're going to take out an oxygen sensor and see if it's got too much pressure if it does the catalytic converter is starting to clog up now as we look down conveniently there's an oxygen sensor right here we got an oxygen sensor socket and we're going to remove it they're usually pretty stuck so i'm going to use a real long bar extension bar to get it loose there it goes and we can unscrew it take the socket off now Put it up here. We'll unscrew it. And you can see the sensor's pretty new. They tried a new sensor and it didn't fix. But did they test it? I don't know. We're going to put in an oxygen sensor. Test it. Then we'll tighten the socket to make sure it's sealed right. You got to have it tight or you won't get the right pressure reading. Now it's nice and snug. You can screw the gauge in. And now you can see the gauge is hooked up and we'll start the car. Start it up. Give it a few revs. See, it has no pressure at all. Now we'll rub it up and see if it changes. As you can see, the gauge moved a little, but it means nothing. If you have two and a half, three, four, five pounds pressure, the cat's clogged up. But this stays pretty much at almost no pressure at all, meaning the exhaust system is free and it's not restricted. So it's not there. We'll remove the gauge and the socket adapter. Then I'll use my magnet to pull it out. I use a magnet so I don't burn my finger. So I'll blow into this one. 
And you can see it moves. I blew in it, so the gauge is working fine. So now we're bringing out my big boy, my OTC high level scanner. See if it gives us more information we can use. Since the math sensor's already been changed, and then it's got a nip and denso one, the correct one for the car. It's not that. He said he had the math sensor changed. It made no difference. It still ran poorly. Let's see what Bosch has to say. We go to diagnostics, auto ID. I'm going to do all the mode 9 data and mode 6 data. It's a much more specific machine, so we get a lot better information. Start it up and do data stream. Since we're having problems with the running, we're going to do engine transmission. Now we'll start with all data items, just to get a general overview. Now, as we look, the long-term fuel trim, it's adding fuel. So long-term, it is running rich even though now the short term it's actually subtracting a tiny amount of fuel the ignition advance is 14 that's normal we'll rev it up goes back up and then we let go goes back down you notice how the previous scan tool took a while for the ignition timing to go back down because it's a cheaper tool this bosch one is much better it refreshes quicker hence when we took our foot off the gas it went back to normal timing like it's supposed to fast not the car that's doing it that was a scan tool differential looking at the rest of the stuff got to refresh the screen now and we can see it idle it's 1.96 two grams per second that's normal at idle now when we bring it up to about 2500 rpm in new it should read about seven grams per second we'll get it up to 2500 there it is so it's reading right there i got it down a little it's hard to keep it up but that's working it's going up and down like it should now that is a new toyota nip and denso mass airflow sensor but you can't trust anything i did. tested it that's work so let's check the air fuel sensor the monitor sensor two bank one sensor two bank one sensor one all right we're going to check that stuff as you can see the one that we checked before the air fuel sensor bank one sensor one that's has voltage but the bank one sensor two it's not changing at all there it is it goes zero it seems to be lazy Rev it up, it's not moving like the other one eventually does. So we might have a lazy oxygen sensor, but let's go further. Now looking at the fuel system, we got a long-term fuel trim it's adding. So it's running slightly lean. Now it shows no misfires at all. So this is a real quandary. It's running just slightly lean. I'm guessing the fuel injectors are just kind of old and worn. A lot of times you can clean them. I'm gonna try some of this royal purple, throw it in a gas tank, and see what happens. Got the nice funnel so it fits right in. Though so in this case, the funnel got stuck. So you gotta stick your finger in and then pull it out. Well, isn't that just the cat's meow? Right? There, there it goes. You can always wiggle them out. I'm gonna start her up, go for a good half hour drive. And we'll leave it in second gear. So it'll rev higher and burn quicker. We'll let it tick at about, say, 4,000 RPMs for about half an hour of driving. Well, we've driven around now, so let's check the fuel trim now. And you can see the long-term fuel trim has gone to 0.8%. That means it's only adding a tiny amount of fuel instead of about 5% it was adding before. So... It's fixing it. Now, that was only a half hour drive. As you drive longer, it can even do a better job. Dirty fuel injectors seem to be one of the biggest problems in this vehicle. Now, you know, something as dumb as slightly dirty fuel injectors that don't spray enough fuel or don't make the perfect conical shape can make your car hesitate when you try to take off. And here's some bonus questions and answers. MW says, I have a cooling question. My son has an 04 Chevy Tracker, six cylinder, 110,000 miles. The coolant's green and dirty, needs to be changed. The manual says to use a GM one. What should I use? Okay, some fool put green coolant in it. That thing should have never had green coolant in it. Now, back in the day, the Dex Cool that GM used was kind of crappy, but that was only for a few years. Now they figured out it has no problems. Flush the entire system out so there's nothing in it. Get it flushed. You can get a garden hose, flush it, take the thermostat out if you want to. You can pay a mechanic who's got a heated water machine to completely flush it out. Then put in the modern long life coolant. It doesn't have to be the GM coolant. It can be any modern long life coolant. They're called organic acid technology, OAT. The original ones are called IAT, inorganic acid, the green stuff, which doesn't last as long. Flush it all out, put the modern one in, he won't have any problems. Don't know, it says. When you install gaskets, oil pan, or those oil cooler and oil filter housing, is it good or bad to slightly oil those gaskets before installation all right it's a very good question when they are oil seals such as the crankshaft spins there's an oil seal yes you want to put a little engine oil on the lip to pre-lubricate on the other hand oil pan gaskets just gaskets that go around not seals gaskets your valve cover gasket no you don't want any oil on them at all you want them on perfectly dry the seals no but gaskets you want them completely dry you don't want any oil on them 
So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.